Hello, mom and Hi. everybody. Hi, everybody. This is Hoji's and mom's knitting journal. Um, today is Wednesday, June 29, 2022. My name is Hoji, and this is my mom, Virginia. And we are both in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. And we both love to knit and chat and talk about knitting and knit together. It's been a long time since mom was here as a guest in the journal because many reasons. First, I wasn't recording much and then mom took a uh, very long vacation yeah, two to months. two months two months vacation in the Netherlands to visit my sister so she wasn't here to record with me and so um yeah and then I was traveling and yeah I haven't been able to bring mom to the journal for a very long time and I know you all really like when mom is here so I asked mom yeah. if she could come yeah I am grateful because uh, I know many of you ask for me and <laughs> I'm very happy yeah um, so funny story when I was teaching in New York a while ago I was chatting with mom and then she I I, I didn't tell her people were asking for her or as, asking about her and uh, but she did say out of blue you know whoever asks about me tell them that i love them and then a bunch of people actually asked about mom and how she was doing so i got to send um them mom's message so how are you doing mommy fine fine finally at home i miss my home i miss all of you i was very happy with my other daughter but i miss my house i miss my my older grandson i miss them <laughs> yes have you been knitting did you knit a lot when you were away in yes, the I, netherlands yes i knit uh, some pieces did you, did you bring things to yes. show us yes show us your beautiful bag yes. show us your beautiful <laughs> bag <laughs> yes it is my preferite one this because. is oh it has a stain here it's the mancho Sorry. Hmm. Sorry. So this is the Santa Cruz bag from Hojianco. We will not. This because I use it. Of course. <laughs> of course. I I don't. All of my bags are stained. I don't keep them pristine. But I love that it is big enough for you to bring all your yeah, projects. Yes. Yes. Well, this so one. Are we going to do like a mom's fashion show? Yeah. yeah. Mom's a little one. Fashion show. <laughs> This one I knitted for my trip. I call it, it, it has no um, written pattern. Ah. It's my own pattern. Did you yes. design this? Yes. Mommy! With all my leftovers, and some of them you sent me. <laughs> Do you remember? Yes, I remember. Yes. Mommy, this is spectacular. <laughs> Thank you. So we have no idea what the yarn is. No. And there is no pattern for this. No. It's <laughs> the only one in the world. <laughs> Can you tell us about it? What you did? How you designed it? Uh, because I love the colors and I said, oh, who he sent me so many leftovers. What can I do with them? <laughs> Look at that. And so I began with uh, garden stitch. Uh, pedazo, uh, piece, piece or section and then I decided to, to introduce some eyelets mm. <laughs> different eyelets do you see yes I Those see are different I see and then you yeah. got fancy look at this fancy border mommy that is a fancy border yeah yeah it is I think this is malabrigo <laughs> mechita <laughs> Yes, I think is, yes. <laughs> this is Malabrigo Mechita in plomo or similar. Do you like it? I love it. Very, very much. <clears throat> and you didn't see it because you you were uh, in, in the Netherlands only a couple of days. Mm. But I used it in 
in the Netherlands. This is so elegant, ma'am. Okay, next. Next one. Ma'am's fashion show. The next one is, uh, is an adaption. <gasps> it's an adaptation. A, an adaptation. It's an adaptation. I think you can imagine <laughs> which one it is. I this recognize is, those. This lines. is the little Frank. <gasps> Baby Frank? Baby Frank. <gasps> What do you think? Mommy, I think it's stunning. <laughs> this is the baby Frank. The baby, what did you do? Tell us about your modifications. Um, less um, bandas, less, Le fewer bands. Yeah. And then you were able to follow the pattern. Exactly, exactly. With no modifications. No modifications. Do you remember how many fewer bands? How? Cuantas menos? Only one. Just one Just one fewer band? In each color. In each in each section. Yeah. Ay, mami. Why did you decide to do that modification? Did you have because your I, yardage? Because no, I have uh, haven't enough yarn. Right. I, there were uh, big leftovers, and I said, ah. "Mommy, we love using leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> we." <laughs> We really do. Yeah. We really, really do. I think it's the most fun thing that we can do with leftovers. But look at that. That is like you. It is big. It is big. People I could say me. people could say you purchased a kit to make this. Yeah. And you did it with leftovers. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. So these were leftovers from the original, Frank. My original, and uh, I have this one new. This was a whole yeah, skein, yeah. the pink one. Yeah. And then there were leftovers. Because the, my original were <clears throat> the same colors uh, like yes. yours. And the only one color that you use a lot of is the one you did exactly, with the pink. Exactly, exactly. So, ah, mommy, <laughs> you're so resourceful. I am the best. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Frank shawl. This is my design, but mom's modification, which I think that it will suit many of you because we have many people ask, can I make it slightly smaller? Can I use fewer yardage? So this is mom's solution. Yes. Just one fewer exactly. stripe and then exactly. you needed it exactly. I, um, in the beginning, I thought, I don't know how big it should be. But I was uh, surprised because it is a very good. Uh, it's amazing, yeah. mommy. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the more? Next, yes. <gasps> the next one. Next. I don't know if you recognize it. Oh, let me see. I don't know. I, I look at this. <gasps> Mom. Yeah. Wow, this is spectacular. I had, I did some modi some modi modi modifications. modifications also. Okay, this is the marble mount pullover. This is a design that came out last year um, by myself. And this yarn is from Chile. Uh, Maria Angelica ah. is a is a pittorera, a dyer, a dyer uh, who loves me a lot, and she sent me four. Um, skins for skins. Do With you those four skins I made this one a little shawl I haven't given and a pair of socks. You gave me the socks. I have the socks. No, I think so. I have some red yes. socks. Oh, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think so. Do you remember what size you made for uh, you? large? Large, so large. size yeah. four. Yeah. And then, um, do you remember the Dyer's brand? I know it's Maria Angelica, but do you remember what the brand is? It is a very nice uh, yeah, yarn. Yeah, this is a very, very nice yarn. I really like the base. And this is such a simple but beautiful pattern. I love it. But so you've been very, very busy. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> During my stay, in the Netherlands, I met alone mm. yeah. because I don't need to to go to different places. So you already have been there many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to be there to to be with the grandchildren. With the children, exactly. Yeah. So then um, we did together a trip last 
Yeah. We can. We went to to know Camilo. I will put the photos. Okay. Okay. On here on okay. the screen. So Camilo is our, my nephew, mom's grandson. It's mom's six. grandson number six. All of them boys. Yes, we don't have any granddaughters in no. the family. They are all boys. And it's my brother's second baby. And he was born on March 26. Yeah. 26. And my family, we were able to come and visit Camilo shortly after he was born, but mom couldn't come during that visit. And then she went to Netherlands. So you weren't able to meet him until I came back. Exactly. Um, my brother lives about four hours away from Buenos Aires. So I asked mom if she wanted me to drive her to yes, Camilo. I can, I can drive up, but I, I don't like to be alone with a long trip. So I was thinking with whom could I go? And suddenly Hoppy told me, I will take you. <laughs> So we did that last Friday. I've been traveling a, a lot, but um, I think that I am managing my trips very well because I don't feel exhausted. I have made the decision to make the trips just long enough uh, and then return home. I have decided that one thing that really upsets me or gets, gets me anxious whenever I travel is whenever for some reason the trip is over so uh, whether it's abroad or whether it's here in Argentina when there's nothing left to do when there's no other activity planned or other person to meet or or any other work to do if I have to stay another day or or even half a day that that is when all the anxiety comes for me if I am busy if I have um, anything to do yeah. things to do or goals or things to get to know, then I'll, I'll never get anxious. But as soon as like my purpose is done in a trip, then I get stressed yeah. and I return home very stressed. Yeah. But we have a very, very nice trip because yes. we decided in the morning, we decided, oh, should we go to, to visit them again? And we thought it was early, probably they will be. Uh, yeah. So. The baby is only three months old now. Uh, the baby Camilito is only three months old. My brother and sister-in-law are amazing parents. They are doing very well, but Camilito is still uh, a bit uncomfortable. So he cries and he's always looking for- He doesn't sleep well in the, during exactly. the night. So he's looking for his mommy's arms. And so we didn't want to be in their way when a baby is so young and so, we decided to, we had visited them on Friday for about three or four hours. Yeah, it was enough. And then on Saturday, we decided that we would just return home, which was great. And yeah. I think that it was, it was- We took a nice breakfast. We took a nice breakfast. We stayed at a guest house there with my, where my brother lives. So we spent the night together. We needed, we chatted, we talked about my recent trips and so it was great and it was good to spend time together and at midday we were at home to have lunch yes and to rest exactly so that was last uh, friday and saturday yeah and yeah so speaking of that road trip i want to talk about one of your works in progress which is actually my work in progress um, but I had talked about this during last episode, last journal, by the way, two weeks in a row. So I talked about this last journal and this is the pullover version of Eldon Cardigan, now pullover, that I was planning to cast on. and. Because I normally, whenever I take a road trip, I'm on the passenger seat and Charlie or someone else is driving and I get to knit a lot. But this trip that mom and I were making, I was the driver. So I was going to be um, in the driver's seat and I couldn't knit during the entire trip. So I asked mom if she wanted to help me. 
Um, and I it, said, yes, of course. Yeah, mom really likes to <laughs> help me. So I said, would you like to help me if I cast on a, a sample for Elton Pullover? Would you like to work on that while we're driving? So mom was super happy uh, to get that job. And so this is the work in progress. It's not a lot, but you know how fast my mom needs when she's determined. <laughs> so, so this is the work in progress. This is going to be the pullover version of Elton. We are using two different companies for the yarn. The main yarn, the Merino, is Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light. In It's like a gray with brown speckles and gold and some reds. And the color is called Silver Lining. And then, <laughs> see if now it focuses, yeah. And then the mohair, mom's hair, my hair, the mohair is Faye, F-A-E, by Rachel Dice in the colorway Bone. So I, according to my own pattern for the cardigan, I only need one skein of the mohair, so this should be enough, and we'll need two skeins of the yeah. main yarn. And right now it's down to the underarm, yeah. and so we should work the, okay, yeah. the front band, and then we can join together and work the, the body. Yeah. I love Elton. Do you remember I made two? I him. remember you yeah. made a uh, one yeah. with shibui mohair, yeah, and then you made one with the, um, the, uh, la bienemes, la bienemes, Merino. exactly, exactly. I remember. Do you remember everything. I remember everything. I don't need to remember anything because you remember. <laughs> <laughs> These needles that we are using are knit pro probably in US 4 or 3.5 millimeter needles. Yes. So that is one shared work in progress. Yeah. And the other one is, um, I have this to show. I bought in the Netherlands. Ah. Uh, Do you remember? I will talk, let's yeah. talk yarn yeah. in a little bit. I yeah. will put it here with the other yarn. And this one. Ah, oh, that is so good. Okay. Yes, we could tell the story of the yarn store. Yes, it is. Um, my my sister Letty lives in a town in Netherlands called Bemster. No, not no, Bemster. No, no. <laughs> she used to live in Bemster. Uh, Bergen, Bergen is Letty's town near the sea. Near the, near sea. the sea. And then we. So it's a really cute, really cute city or town. It's a touristic city. Very touristic, very beautiful and we were at the beginning you didn't have data on your phone so we were trying to find yeah. places that you could yeah. go walking distance exactly that you could learn yeah. the, um, because the it way is difficult to. they they are not straight streets exactly uh, they are winding yeah. winding roads and I used to to be lost everywhere so yes. <laughs> I, I didn't I, I wasn't uh, eager to, to to walk alone right right so the first thing I looked for of course was a yarn store and there actually is one it's a it's a rather big store yeah it's a rather yeah. big store and funnily enough it's called Finlandia Imports or Finlandia Exports? Finlandia Imports. Finlandia import. Im Imports. It's funny because when we found it, my friend Vera was with us in the Netherlands and she's from Finland. Um, but is there anyone from Finland in the store? No, I, I think they have more. Um, every, no, everything, no. Most, uh, casi todo. E Most. Almost everything from drops. Right, so Scandinavian yarns. Yeah, Scandinavian yarns. Um, so I looked for the store and then we traced the way to the yarn store together and um, yes, 
so she walked there a couple of times and then Letty, my sister asked you to make her a sweater yes but because the story was that i had a lot of yarn you suppose that i i, I haven't enough yarn but i have enough but suddenly i finished all my project with the red <laughs> <laughs> she must be the only person who packs a lot of yarn even for a trip and runs out of yarn because you know what the story is like we always pack i don't know 20 skeins of yarn and we need one or two mom actually packed all the yarn and she ran out of yarn that is unbelievable yes. unbelievable yes, yes. and letty asked me mom would you need a sweater for me okay what do you want and she began to, to look at my patterns yeah. Yeah. and she chose puntilla yeah. or puntilla and so you went to the yarn store yeah. together and mom sent me a message asking me if i could look, take a look at the store's catalog to recommend bases that were similar, similar. to the recommended yarn a fingering weight and so i didn't many of the yarns that uh, were available at the store were gradients many um so then i remember that you had worked with this yarn that you're using now yeah. before and letty my sister she owns a cardigan yeah. made with this yarn yeah. and she loves it so they decided to buy this which is the drops alpaca yeah you still have uh the contrasting yarn so this is the drops alpaca this is uh, a hundred percent alpaca and it's like a fingering weight 50 gram skeins it wasn't very expensive no no it wasn't no it, no no it's not super cheap but it was and reasonably during priced the, during may there were a sale oh okay so no está terminado eh? This is how it's looking so far. No, I, I think that's the back. Like that. Ah, okay, to manage your yarn. Okay. So she put the stitches on hold here at the bottom so that she could figure out how much yarn she has. And then she made one sleeve to make sure she doesn't run out of yarn. And the pattern calls for two colors. Um, so at the, there's one color mostly uh, the sweater is just one color but there are like the little lace uh, additions to the cuffs and the bottom hem and so it requires a contrasting color and my sister chose uh, like a slightly darker shade of green so this is the puntilla pattern and mom is making it for my sister who she will surely wear this a lot because she wears she the one I, I i gave her she used it a lot yes but it was great yes. the gray one um Liddy doesn't like everything we make no so she has she's very picky with what she likes she, but when she likes something she wears it all the time yeah all the time so she's not she doesn't ask for knitting pieces all the time uh, just knit me anything and then she just puts it in a drawer she never very rarely asks for things but the things she asks yeah. for she wears she them. likes yes and my sister does not knit and no. she never wanted to to learn letty no no she never wanted to learn okay That's all. those are your works in progress I have uh, two works in progress, I think, because I already talked about Elton. Then I'm gonna talk about the brioche cardigan. Uh, I didn't make a lot of progress on this, but a little bit. Um, so I think that last week I had a one fewer band I had already divided for the sleeves but now i made another band this is going to be a v-neck version of the newspaper 
pullover and I was actually thinking that I am making two patterns based on two old <laughs> patterns. So I'm making the pullover version of Elton and I'm making the cardigan version of newspaper. Yeah. It was it was not planned. I swear I have new ideas. <laughs> I just I just really felt like doing those things. Uh, probably I should have timed them differently. It's because they are very nice. Yes, do you like this? Yeah. This I am using, again, I'm going to share. I am using La Bien Aimé Merino Boucle. And this is one of the yarns that arrived to let this place when you were there. Ah. And then I am also using La Bien Aimé um, Merino Singles in Damask. This is stone, this is Damask. Also, a note regarding yarn performance. <laughs> um, the Merino Boucle, I am really surprised how much I can knit with a 50 gram skein of yarn. So how much? How much uh, I can knit with just one skein oh, of 50 okay. grams. So these skeins are actually 50 grams, not 100 grams. And this is uh, 100 grams. Yeah. So they are not that yeah. much different. Of course, the yardage is different, but I'm surprised how long I can go with just one skein yeah. of the of the merino boucle. Um, yeah, and then my other work in progress is here in my bowl. This is our. Baul, I'm keeping it open because, of course, I am using straight needles, but I just love this little bag. Let me show you how it looks like when it's closed. This is an older design from Hoji & Co, but it's this little box <laughs> of leather box of yarn. It's a treasure. It's a treasure box. I really like it. And I keep these next to me on the couch <clears throat> sorry and so i keep my my yarn and my my knitting project there so this is my new work in progress that i also talked about during the last journal <clears throat> and i was talking about one skein project yeah um by the way I am now wearing a one skein project. I love very much one skein. Uh, yes, you do. You really like one skein projects. Also, left left leftovers. Leftovers, <laughs> of course. We love leftovers. Yes. We're going to talk about leftovers yeah. shortly. Um, this is, if you're wondering, last week, I, I thought of wearing this for one reason. Last week, I was wearing my bubble cowl, which is a one skein cowl designed for one skein of Malabrigo Mechita. And I asked people on YouTube to tell me whether they preferred one skein cowls or one skein shawls. And it's quite tie, it's quite similar the preference. 50%. But no, I think no. that there's a preference for shawls. For shawls. But a lot of people do love the cowls and a lot of people do love both. They lots of people said I love everything both. Everything is okay. <laughs> everything is okay. Um, so this is actually a cowl that looks like a shawl. And I designed this several years ago to use one skein of a yarn that is not fingering weight, but it's not lace weight either. So in this skein, there were more yards than normal for a fingering weight. I think that there were about 600 yards and so it looks like a shawl even you can even wear it um, like that so it looks even more like a shawl I added a little fringe there's there are some lace um, details also but it's actually joined at the back so it never falls off or it never comes out of place and it looks like a tube it's rather big and I love this thing, actually. I love it a lot. I don't wear it as much. <laughs> I'm trying to wear more of my knitting now that I'm starting to record more often. 
Um, so I plan to bring some knitting to the journal every now and then. Okay, so so the pattern is called Midsummer Haze. Uh, it was published on July 2017. I think I knitted it. Do you think so? Yeah. With Mari on the cover. And no, um, no, not this one. It's another one. And then um, it uses one skein of linear light by Walk Collection. This yarn is 50% alpaca, 25% linen, 25% silk and it's 655 yards per 100 gram skeins. Uh, the sample was made using colorway boho, which is coincidentally the same color, the same color. I am using yeah. right now. So I didn't know that I was using the same color. Uh, as you can see, I am attracted to this color, but this was actually a gift from my friend Timea and um, it's a different base. So this is a lot lighter because it's got some alpaca and linen, especially the linen makes the yarn dye differently. And this is Merino nylon, which makes the yarn take the dye a lot more saturated and the speckles are a lot more noticeable. So, of course, um, I can't show you properly because I am using my trusty straight needles, but I did wind the yarn up and I started um, a new shawl, a one skein shawl. And I am experimenting with these slip stitches. So I'm, I am slipping stitches with the yarn in the front so that you can see the strands um, on the front of your knitting and there's some very simple lace happening and also I am doing some short row wedges so on one side you get a lot of the lace pattern and on the other side you get a lot of uh, garter stitch so yeah i still have a lot of this yarn this is tough sock by let's see if i cover mom's oh, i don't know if it will focus but this is tough sock by walk collection yarn in the colorway boho the same color i am wearing now which is a color i obviously like very much and this is my other new work in progress um it's getting darker now next time we record maybe we can record a little bit earlier because uh last week i was recording at noon and oh. it, there was very good light and even though right now it's only quarter past three uh we can already see that the sun is setting and we get a lot more it is shadows darker. yes um what else <laughs> okay so I talked about my brioche cardigan. I talked about my new shawl. Okay, I we talked about the trip to Entre Rios. I have a finished object to share so that I can finally give them to the recipient. I finished my boy's uh, socks. These are the socks for Nano that I showed last time i recorded and these are for a man's foot size 43 or about a 10 and a half and they were made using leftovers from la vienne merino sport uh, the leftovers from my shawl my sevek shawl and yeah so Nana was here yes. uh, maybe like a half hour ago. He he had lunch at mom's and they came together and mom and I asked him if he could be a guest in the podcast so he could talk about his love for hand-knit socks, but he said he was very shy and he didn't want to be featured <laughs> in the podcast. So yeah. um I think that we'll give them the socks anyway. Yeah. yeah, he's the best. So 
these are officially done and shown and now I can give them to Nano. Perhaps I'll ask him to model them tomorrow yeah. before <laughs> he can he can finally wear them. Okay, that is my only finished object for today. Then I was But you didn't uh, show you didn't show the Felipe for Ah, uh, no, no, I didn't show it, and I we, don't have we any took photos. three Felipe's for him. Yes, <laughs> we took three vests for my nephew. But I was going to ask you if you had a chance, I don't think you did, but if you had a chance to watch last week's journal. No, I didn't. Okay, so in last week's journal, I showed a gift that I brought for you and me so that we could knit together. Okay. And I talked about this yarn uh, in the journal, but if you want, I can tell you again. So this is, a, this is a shop that was vending at the show where I was teaching in New York, and they make yarn by recycling sari. Ah, uh, yeah. So they used um, old saris from India and they turn them into strips and then they spin them into yarn. And so they give jobs to people in yeah. India and they actually, I, I really love the yarn and it's something that we never use. I know it's more colorful than I usually knit, but I thought you would really like the colors. So I brought two, two balls. Okay. You can choose the one you love the okay. most and then we can think of something that we can knit together so okay. we can do an it alone. Okay. So, I like the idea. This is one, they are coming undone. And this is the other extraño. one. Qué extraño. And if you take the ply, you can actually see how it's fabric that has been twisted. Yeah, yeah. And it's all silk. So some ideas that I thought could be maybe a shawl and we could use like a solid color and add some details like some stripes or we could make maybe even make a long-term blanket where we use a solid it's color and then we stripe idea. and then we do like fr yeah. a fringe in in these colors because or something else or maybe something for a yoke i think it or is a towel rough, rough for, for something in the body well, it's silk. I think that it feels rough because it's very tightly spun. I think that if, for example, if you use it as the fringe of a shawl, I don't think that it will be so scratchy. Some parts of the shawl. Like stripes uh, yeah. or, or los that flecos, could be. Uh, yeah. the fringe. Yeah, that could be. But if you prefer not to use it on your neck, then we can think of something else. This one's coming undone, yours too. We need to redo the... What do you think you would like? Which one? No, what kind of project? I think I didn't, uh, I think I didn't, uh, I couldn't use to, in the body, so. Yeah. Do you want to swatch it or you think that no, you could no, no. use it in the maybe, body? Maybe a blanket? Maybe a blanket. Yeah. Which one would this be one. yours? This, it was the first. Any? Okay, so you get the yeah. purple with yellow, green and all the yeah. colors and I get the mostly red with all the colors too. So, for a blanket, since we both really, really like leftovers, and I was hoping you said a blanket, because yeah. I don't think that I can wear this color. <laughs> <laughs> so? So, I brought a big box of leftovers. Oh my God. <laughs> that <laughs> the leftover <laughs> the leftover <laughs> bin and i have plenty more this is just <sighs> one bin and i categorize them by color so for example if you want to make your blanket with so there are a lot of purple if you want to make them with pinks and purples to go with this then you can use pinks and purples or you can use turquoises and blues or both. But I was thinking, remember a couple of years ago when I made the, the blanket that I gave to Carson? I did. 
the the blanket that I gave to Carson, the one that I made ah, using yeah, yeah, three yeah, strands yeah, remember, together. Yeah. I was thinking maybe you want to do something like that. Yeah. And then every now and then we can add a stripe in the sari yeah. silk, and then we can do all the fringes in the sari silk. Yeah, it's a good idea. So you can choose leftovers. We have red and pink. You have we have multicolors. You have a lot of leftovers. <laughs> this is one of maybe four beans. I have tons of blue. Oh. You could make like a super blue one. They are nice for, for like this. <laughs> you can have all yeah. my leftovers for shawls. Yeah. You don't have to use them yeah. for the blankets. Mommy's looking at my leftovers yeah. like, oh, <laughs> oh, I could this take this. Treasure. <laughs> I could take this. Um, or maybe you want to do some neutrals. Yeah. For this one, I think this is the, the best one. But would you would you like a blanket in this color at your house? Not for me. Not for me. And who would you make it for? Anyone. I don't know. Or maybe some neutrals? Maybe. I think it will look I think you you don't like it, but I think you'll be surprised how much you like it when you need that. Maybe. <laughs> I think you're like, oh I don't know what to do with yeah. this. And then yeah, I like it. But I think yeah. you will like it. I think this is would you put that in your house? Okay. That color. Okay. ¿Pondrías en tu casa o no? Me gusta más este. Yeah, so then don't use this. I think that you yeah. would like this at Me your gusta house. Más este. Would you put that over your yeah. bed? Yeah. Don't make shawls. No, I'm not Make a blanket. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then I will use probably this bag <laughs> or or maybe I'll go crazy and I use like all of my very 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 colorful leftovers I think I'll do I don't know what I'll do what do you think okay, the neutrals this is my color I think we won't see the silk too much. I think I'll do a gray blanket. I think I will do a gray blanket with red. With the red. With the red fringe. Okay. And we can start today. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, mom is not super excited about the knee salon, but wait until we cast on, she will love it. I know, <laughs> she will love it. I only um, need to, ¿cómo se dice? Tengo que ubicarme en... You have to get used to the idea? Yeah. yeah. I think so. But I think you will enjoy using yeah. all of those leftovers. I it's very leftovers. satisfying. I enjoy leftovers. Remember when we needed for the blanket for that yeah, yeah well i think you would like it and this was very special so did you tell you did you tell them about yeah we told that story our sometime. blanket yeah we told that story a few times um so yeah so that is one of my planned projects do you want a project bag look I have this project bag, which I think you will love. I have a lot of project bags. <laughs> we have never enough. We have never enough. So that is one of my planned projects, to use some of these leftovers. I thought it would be a good idea to tri triple strand them. So we are going to be using three strands together in and maybe six millimeter needles for the blanket six. or seven six or seven seven maybe to have a this. so that it's yeah. like yeah loose soft, and but. soft yeah maybe seven millimeter yeah. needles and three my other idea that i want to cast on is a new sock 
we'll see if I get to work on this. I finished Nano socks, so I am giving myself permission to cast on a new pair. And I wanted to, I wore my Flores socks yesterday. It's a pattern that I published a couple of years ago and they have become a little bit worn out. They are kind of old already. So I thought it's a good, it's a good time to cast on a new pair of shorty socks. And so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and of course, I was very tempted to use these <laughs> leftovers that you just saw, and I have a lot more hanging out, but I also thought it was a good opportunity to switch around the dyers and the brands that I've been using. So I haven't used any skein yarns in a long time. This is a yarn by Australian company Skein. Let me see if I have the tag. This is so old. This is so old. This is Sock Shimmer. Mm. Wow, it's so difficult to get. Let me see. Mm. Okay, no, it won't work. So it's Sock Shimmer by Skein Yarn. Um, the color is called Milky Way. This is 75% Merino, 25% Nylon, 5% Stellina, 440 yards in 100 gram skein. And this yarn is so old, so old, that I think it was actually from the time when I could order yarn and still receive it in Argentina, which is impossible. Very long time ago. It's probably almost, it's got to be about 10 years old. Oh my God. And I always want to start a new pair of socks with this yarn. I look at it all the time and I think, oh, I want to start something new, something new. And I don't know what I haven't yet, but this is what I'm going to be using for my new pair of shorty socks. They are probably going to be cable and lace because I really like to look at a pattern on the top of my foot when I put my socks on. And yeah, so these are my new uh, projects for um, the next upcoming days. Then, uh, do you want to talk about the yarn that you got? I got it in the Netherlands <coughs> um, for some socks, but it is rather uh, thick. Yeah, thick. Have you already knitted with it? No. This is 75% wool, 25% nylon, and it looks like there are 210 meters in each skein, so it should be regular okay, yeah regular sock yarn i don't think that it will be thicker than normal it looks the, the yarn looks thicker well we'll see we'll start with okay then okay other news other news is tomorrow we have a shop update for hoji and co our back company at 2 p.m buenos aires time that is 1 p.m Eastern time in the US. Um, we haven't had an update in a while. Um, first it was because I was traveling, then my sister-in-law Moni had uh, some health issues last week. And so we planned the update for tomorrow. So we have a lot of things that we have been producing that we weren't able to put in the shop yet. Um, I am going to do an Instagram live today from the warehouse at Hoji & Co at 6 p.m. Um, which is 5 p.m. Eastern time. And I don't think that this journal will be up before I do the live. So if the live goes well, then I will save it to the Hoji & Co Instagram. But if it's a mess, I will erase it and it will be lost forever. <laughs> um, so that is today. Tomorrow we have the shop update and we have been making beautiful bags. One that I'm really happy about is 
the crossbody pampa. This is based on our old design, the pampa bucket, but it's slightly bigger. I will be using this one for my um, for my blanket knit along. So I will be using this to hold all my all the leftovers that I'm using at each time. So it's a like a regular pampa, but we added these straps, little straps that you can also hide. They, they pivot on the rivets, so you can hide them and they become invisible. But if you want to use the bag as a crossbody strap, as a crossbody bag, you then make, you turn them up. And then we also included a long leather strap. They are so tight when they are brand new. There we go. So you can actually carry your project as you go. I really like this feature. I decided to keep a blue one. I don't normally wear blue. It's not the color that I normally would choose, but this batch of blue bags is absolutely spectacular. And every time, the other options we'll have tomorrow are brown and olive. I think I have some there, but it's fine. Um, Every time I looked at the three options, I kept looking at the blue. So I thought, okay, perhaps I need to have a color that I don't normally have. And I decided to keep the blue. The other upgrade that we did to the Pampa is we added a beautiful lining. So normally most of our bags are not lined. We show the wrong side of the leather because they are rustic and they are handmade and so we want to keep them natural looking and very, very minimal. But for this, we added a white lining and we added a zippered pocket. So you can actually put your phone in there or you can use it to store the strap if you are not using the crossbody option. So this is the crossbody Pampa. It's all natural leather handmade by us and they'll be available tomorrow in blue, olive, and brown. Then tomorrow we will also have Recoleta bags, these little totes, we call them Recoleta, and they are very Parisian looking. They have our little logo there. Um, maybe we should show how much yarn we can put in here. Me pasas tu pullover. So, mom's sweater is probably about three skeins. So, that is what a whole sweater looks like inside the Recoleta bag. I don't have any full skeins to show you now, but what I can do is, let me see, sometimes. Sometimes people tell me that I don't show how many balls of yarn fit. I show them in skeins and then balls fit differently. So there's one sweater already in there. And this is like half a ball of yarn. And this is one full ball of yarn. And then Let's take the sari yarn. There's another ball of yarn. Can I have your sari yarn? And then there's another ball of yarn. So we put one sweater and four full balls of yarn. And there's still some room for this. Um, the Recoleta has a front pocket for your patterns or your notions pouch or your phone. And then there's an inside pocket with a zipper. This is a 
a rather big pocket with a flap and the zipper. And then we also always include this little, let me take it off, let me take it off so that it's not attached to the bag all the time. We add these little cute um, pouches so they open like that and you can put your stitch markers and then you can keep them attached to your bag if you want. Yeah, so that is Recoleta, and this color is called Mink. It's one of my favorite colors. It's muy delicado. It's very, very classy. It is a shoulder bag, if you were wondering, but it's not very big. It's um, it's big enough for a small sweater project or, or like a big shawl, but it's not big enough for a blanket. No. And then, the other big bag that we're having tomorrow, we're having more things. I didn't want to overwhelm you with Hojienko uh, news and updates, but I'm going to put my Recoleta <laughs> inside to fill it up. This is our pinup tote, and this is a massive, a massive bag. This is made of leather, and it's got a pocket with perforations where you can add your favorite enamel pins for example remember last week that i told you i had received a new set of pins from my friends in brazil and i was going to use it for my photo shoots i'm going to put it on to one of these little holes and then you can add your collection of enamel pins without damaging your leather. So this is the pinup tote. It has one outside pocket with perforations and then there's an inside flat pocket um, too and there are tan handles. So those are the news for Hoji and Co. What else? All the news. Um, I will be teaching again at the end of the year. I will be teaching in Barcelona on November 5 and 6. I'm, I'm only teaching two courses. So on Saturday 5, I am teaching a new workshop, which is <coughs> especially dedicated to grading, how to convert patterns to multiple sizes in a big range of sizes, at least nine or 10 sizes. And the aim of the class is to talk about key aspects of grading and how it's not just multiplying your numbers by a bigger factor. Instead, all the considerations you have to have and how proportions change for smaller and bigger bodies. Um, normally, I I, I, for many years, I taught a workshop called Introduction to Sweater Design. And uh, during those workshops, I used to have many designers coming to my classes, which was a huge honor. And often we didn't have enough time to go in depth when we were talking about grading. So we would like discuss grading very briefly and I would show them my method, but we weren't able to um, talk about problems or analyze certain uh, specific aspects of grading together. So I decided to create a, a new class for Saturday for designers to come and learn grading with me. And this is going to be in person at Barcelona Knit Festival on November 5. And on November 6, which is the Sunday, I will be teaching along Vera we will be teaching together in the same classroom. It's an abbreviated version of the workshop that we taught in New York, and it's called How to Knit Your Perfect Sweater. It's, uh, it's uh, all that you can know, all that we can teach about raglan designs and how to modify them to perfectly fit your body. Ah, and then lastly, 
uh, thanks to everyone who's cheering for me and my running. Uh, it helps a lot to know that it's inspiring to some of you and I am really happy to share my running with all of you. I have my race, as I mentioned, my race is this Sunday. I'm trying to run 30 kilometers, which is about 19 miles or yeah, a little bit under 19 miles. So that's going to happen on Sunday morning. I'm still training for that. I'm feeling strong. So yeah, wish me luck for, for that. And I think that's it. <laughs> Do you have anything else to share, mom? Nothing. Okay, thank you for coming. No problem. Mommy. Thank you. Thank, thank you for inviting me.